All right, folks, the final video in the series here that I want to go over is just a recap of all of essentially what we did, how we did it using these disks, and uh, just provide an overview of uh, the method in, in general from A to Z, uh, and specifically go through the calculations themselves. So uh, the first video, what we did is when we initially sighted the target, we, we turned to put them on our 180, and then we estimated the target's angle on bow. All right, and in order to the reason why we did that is so that we could match course or what we think is the best estimate of the target's course. We used the attack disk to derive using bearing and uh, and uh, own course set to the white triangle and the bearing here set to the bearing on the outer red ring. We um, we adjusted this so that the angle on bow was aligned with this line here that gave us the target course. We then matched the course, right? And at that point in time, we adjusted our own speed such that the bearing didn't change. We used, and at that point, we could we could use this disc for that. But since we knew we know we were, we thought we were steering a parallel course. We don't even need that. Just whatever your own speed is um, to the decimal, such that you, the bearing doesn't change. That is your initial speed estimate. And at that point, what we did was we noted our own course. We noted our own speed, so at, at the point in time that we got the constant bearing, right, the values that corresponded to that, so our own course, our own speed, what that bearing was exactly, right, and then we derived what the angle on bow was at that point in time, okay? We noted those down on the map, or note them on paper, or whatever, so we have those for later. So that was, so that was what, that's all we really covered in the first video. The second video... Uh, we started the overhaul maneuver, and the purpose of the overhaul maneuver is to get in front of the target, meaning at a zero degree angle on bow. That serves two purposes. One, it allows for the most flexibility in carrying out the attack, meaning, uh, think and think of it through a historical lens, right? You These targets, these guys had no idea when, if and when those targets were going to change course, spoil their chances of attack altogether, so therefore being at a zero degree angle on bow was was recommended in the U-boat commander's handbook for that very reason to give yourself the most flexibility of attack and along those lines it allows you to, de to de decide what side of the target you want to attack from why is that important well we need we we always want to strive to attack from the sun assuming we're attacking during the day uh, attack from the sun or in the case of a night surface attack, we want to attack from the opposite side from the moon, so we don't get caught in the in the track of the moon, so to speak. So we want to we can pick the side of the target we want to attack from. And when we did that, uh, we um, uh, so we began the overhaul maneuver. We were able to refine the angle on bow, or at least just get a gut check on the angle on bow during the overhaul. Okay, that pretty much wrapped up the second video. The third video, we we achieved the zero degree angle on bow. We ran ahead, vorgesetzt, uh, vorsetz maneuver. We got ahead of the target to zero. We were able to at that point to ascertain that zero degree angle on bow, and that's the second advantage of the of running ahead was that. You know, not only do you afford yourself the flexibility of deciding the side of the target to attack from and just flexibility in the overall attack and approach, uh, it also allows you to assert, to get the target's exact course line. And the importance of that, of course, is uh, you it allows you to take that new course figure that you figured out, go back to the numbers that you wrote on the, on the nav map or that you note, wrote down, the t your own course, which is the target, which was the same as the target course, or so you thought. Taking that course difference and then adjusting the angle on bow by that difference, and then redoing this calculation. Okay, and so like in our case with our fact pattern, I think we used we had a speed of 5.6. Okay, and we initially um, estimated the course to be 290. Okay, um, well it, the 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 course turned out to be 250, 257. Okay, so so 290, 257. Um, that's a that's a 33 degree, uh, 33 degree difference. Okay, so uh, we would have had to reduce this uh, by we had we had an angle on bow I believe of 106 that corresponded to 106. Okay, so we if we reduce 106 by by 33 we end up with um, 
with a 73 degree angle on bow. So we would have said, okay, we align the 5.6 with 73. The, the bearing was 74. So we then we read off at the bearing here what the speed was. And again, it was 5.6. It was pretty much spot on. This, this becomes different when, when the bearing is different. So let's say, you know, let's say that same thing were true. The angle on bow were 70, let's say we're 73 degrees still. But let's say the bearing was, let's say the bearing was 45 degrees. Okay, so then we come over here and we'd say, okay, the constant bearing was 45 degrees. The speed is, uh, you know, 4.1, 4.2. Okay, so that's, that's how you do that with this. So that was, that's what we covered in the, in the, in the third video. We, we got to the zero, we matched course on the zero, meaning we steered, you know, 257 as well so that we knew we were on the same parallel course. We figured out the true speed by doing what I just did. And then we said, we want to attack from the target's port side because that's where the sun is. So then we turned 90 degrees. We went to half speed ahead, turned 90 degrees, and we started the timer. And why did we do that? Well, we did that so that we could put ourselves a certain distance off the target's track. So we used this disc again. We said, uh, you know, this, and the, again, this is still in the, this is still in the third video. We said, okay, we want to run. We know, we know that half speed ahead is going to yield 12.4 knots. So we set the pointer to 12.4, which is 1.24. It's the same thing, 12.4. And then we said, we wanted to go anywhere from 1500 to 2000 meters off the target's track. So let's find a good, what we did is we found a good round number of minutes that fell in between that range and we, we said five in reality we used more along the lines of 445 or so okay so right about there we said okay that's going to give us you know 1830 1830 meters off the target track that's pretty good so let's we'll use that so we we started the timer and we waited four and a half or four minutes and 40 seconds or so and then what we did is we turned down parallel so we turned to 077 we ran parallel but opposite direction and that was the end of the, of the third video the fourth video when we launched we're underwater we are running parallel we want to know the range at which we want to start turning in now again we're not using the rec manual there's a way to do it without it we already have enough information to compute the range by measuring the the bear the change in the target's bearing over a set over over a uh, either a set time or a set number of degrees we chose to do it over a set number of degrees we were we knew our own speed was three knots okay we knew the target speed was 5.6 knots the effective speed of the closure was the sum of those two 8.6 knots so what we did was we set eight point let's just move this up here we set eight point we set the pointer against 8.6 knots okay we set we measured five minutes we knew that target whoops 8.6 knots we knew the it took we measured over 10 degrees and when we started the measurement, we knew the target was at a at an angle on bow of 27. How did we know that? Well, parallel course. On a parallel course, the 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 distance in degrees from your bow is equal to the angle on bow at all times, as long as you're steering parallel. So we knew the bearing was 323 or 333 three, three, rather. 333 three, three is 27 degrees from the bow. The angle on bow was 27 degrees. Okay, so. Um, so at 27 degrees, we, we, we want to remember that figure. So 8.6 knots of closure, uh, 10 degree, uh, 10 degree difference uh, took us a little over five minutes. So we align the 10 degrees with five minutes, and then we find that original angle on bow of 27 here, and we read across 3,500 meters that the target we measure the bearing change on that target was 3,500 meters away. So we said, ah, that's within our range of 2,000 to 4,000 meters. Let's turn in. So then we turned in 90 degrees. We simply said, okay, our, our course at that time was 077. We want to find the 90 degree attack course. So we move our pointer to 90 degrees here. We read off, whoops. Um, we read off uh, a course of 347. So we laid, uh, we went hard to port, we steered 347, and we, at that time, we say, okay, now we're, we're there, okay, we want to know 
how what speed to set in order to get ourselves positioned exactly on a certain range from the targets from the target when we shoot. So what we did at that point was we said, um, I think when we first started the exercise in in um, in that last video there, we said, okay, the target is at 34 degrees right now, and we said he's probably based on the range that we turned in on, he's probably 2,500 meters away. We just guessed on that one, but just based on the the range of the target, uh, the, the further target when we did the Ausbandungsverfahren and got the range, we said that one is probably 2,500 meters away. Okay, so what we did was we took we took the 90 mark and we aligned 2,500 meters with the 90, just like this. We want to find out as the first step how long it's going to take that target going 5.6 knots to reach our bow, right in front of our bow. So we see that, that target's about 2,500 meters away. The target is 34 degrees from our bow right there that target needs to go 1400 meters we read off 1400 meters um, to get to our bow well we know the target is going 5.6 knots so we set 5.6 here and we read off at 1400 meters it's going to take him uh, a little over eight minutes to get there okay so now we say the next step and this is I, I overlooked this in the video at first the next step is we need to figure out how far off the targets track we are well, we know the target's range, or we estimated it to be 2,500 meters. The angle on bow at 34 degrees, since we know we're steering a perpendicular course, the angle on bow is 90 minus that number, right? So the angle on bow would have been 56 degrees. I believe that's right. Yep, 56. So we move this to 56. The distance from the track was uh, just under 2,100 meters, okay? So we say, all right, we're 2,100 meters away from the target's track. How far do we want to be? Well, we said, let's try to be, uh, let's try to be 600 meters away, okay? So we take 2,100 meters minus 600 meters. That's a difference of uh, 1,500 meters, okay? So 1,500 meters, we say, how long is it going to take us to go? What speed do we need to set to get our, to move 1,500 meters in eight minutes because that's the time it's going to take the target to get in front of our bow so we said we have to move the 18 the 1500 here over the eight and we need to read off the speed the speed we needed to set was just over six knots so we say uh oh we need to we need to we need to, to hoof it a little bit so we put our scope down we kicked we kicked a great speed ahead to get our speed up a little bit so that we could close that distance and get that to that 600 meters away and that actually ended up being about what our range to that uh, closer target that we shot was if I'm remembering correctly it was thereabouts okay uh, it, again this isn't an exact science but what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your your boat to you know in the ballpark somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand meters away or less in order to get that um, to maximize your chances of a hit okay and if you if you want to follow historical procedures, that's what you would do. Uh, so, uh, so that is pretty much everything uh, with uh, with this as far as conducting a no rec manual historical attack uh, using the both sides of this disc. I highly suggest you look at the manual. All of the examples um, or the calculations that I've gone through are in the attack disc manual. Uh, that I am made available in New Captain Training in Wolfpack Discord. I can certainly make it available again, and I can certainly do so upon request. Um, so please DM me if you've got questions about that. But um, uh, that pretty much covers it from A to Z. So I will uh, we'll get these up on YouTube and uh, and post them for people to uh, to learn from and enjoy. Thank you so much.